If you remember, I did mention possible side effects. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, here we're going to talk about four medication effects. And you see this with, you potentially can see this with any uh, drug, uh, prescription or over the counter drug. The pharmacologic effect is what you want it to do. Okay, so reducing panic attacks or eliminating hallucinations or whatever. <clears throat> side effects are, excuse me, for the most part, side effects are uh, undesirable effects of the medication. Now, I say for the most part, there are occasions when you can use a side effect for your benefit. Now, let me give you a very good example of this. In elders who develop major depression, about two-thirds of them uh, slip into this failure to thrive syndrome, and they start losing a lot of weight. Okay? A drug that's used a lot in treating geriatric depression is Remeron, which is well known for putting weight on. So there, you're using the side effect actually to, to your benefit, okay? Probably more commonly is if a, dr a person's having trouble going to sleep and the drug causes sedation for the first three or four hours that's in your system, then you take it at bedtime. And you can use the sedation then to help the person fall asleep, okay? But generally speaking, side effects are undesirable, okay? But they also are defined as, as being relatively common. Okay, relatively common. Now, uh, <clears throat> if you go to the uh, physician's desk reference, if you go to the package inserts that you get with medications, uh, you will see, uh, pro probably everybody here has seen that, you'll see lists of side effects that are, you know, a mile long. And any side effect that shows up when they do the initial studies uh, has to be put down there. You know, and what they do typically, though, is they will list the most common side effects and compare it to placebos. Right. Now, idiosyncratic effects are side effects, but they are side effects that occur ex with extreme, extremely rarely, okay? Uh, maybe one case out of a million or three cases out of a million or something like that. They are completely unpredictable, typically. And, and here's where you, you'll hear uh, often reports uh, uh, in the media, sensationalized reports. Where you'll really see this is in this medical journal called the National Enquirer. Okay. And it's, it's like little uh, uh, Johnny Smith, you know, of Elk Grove, California, took Riddle and started growing a beak and feathers and crowing like a rooster. I mean, you know, stuff like that. Now, I'm kind of making that up. But, but there, every now and then we hear about these very either bizarre or horrible things, like, you know, an idiosyncratic effect of uh, antipsychotics is sudden death. It's extremely rare, okay? It's hard to predict, but it can happen. Question? Um, would that include also, um, like, serotonin syndrome? Because I've read about that as a side effect for yeah, uh, serotonin syndrome almost always y y is not a side effect of one medication. This is <coughs> <coughs> it's typically a drug interaction problem. Excuse me. Uh, let, let me let me explain this. Okay, we'll we'll talk about serotonin syndrome later. Uh, if you take a huge overdose of Prozac or something like that, it won't kill you. I mean, you'll get like the worst case of diarrhea you've ever had in your whole life. But these new antidepressants uh, are not toxic, uh, even taken in huge amounts. Uh, but you're, you're flooding the system with a massive amount of reuptake inhibition, but there's a limit to that, and there's a limit to how much it can result in the buildup of serotonin. However, if you, add, if you also increase serotonin by a different mechanism of action, like if you take 5-HTP, or you take tryptophan, that can cause a serotonin syndrome when you're taking it with antidepressants, okay? Uh, or if, let me think of another example. If you take uh, 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 SSRI, like Prozac, with an MAO inhibitor, they both increase serotonin, but different mechanisms of action. That can produce a serotonin syndrome. <clears throat> it's technically possible that this could be a side effect if you're looking at overdoses, but I don't really think it's considered a side effect, okay? All right. Now, allergic reactions. Here, uh, the immune system, uh, this is what an allergy is. The immune system is responding to 
a foreign molecule as if it's an invading organism. All right, and it turns on a, 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 you know an immune response. And fortunately, the vast majority of these in psychiatric medications uh, are benign, and they are, for the most part, rashes. Uh, most of these rashes uh, are on the torso and on the arms and legs, not very often in the head. They are uh, red, inflamed, itchy uh, kind of rash or hives. Uh, for the most part, they're, they're benign, meaning they're, they're not dangerous. Uh, Lots of times you have to switch the drug because it, uh, you know, it just drives the person crazy. Usually if you have an allergic reaction, they'll say stop the medicine, take Benadryl, which is really a very potent antihistamine, and try a different class of medications or something like that. There are rare occasions where there are life-threatening immunologic reactions, and we'll talk about those you know, when we get to the particular uh, classes of drugs. But most, for the most part, allergic reactions are not dangerous. Uh, but one important thing I want to say to you is, well, actually, actually two things. One, some people come in and say, oh, I'm, I'm allergic to antidepressants. <clears throat> and I've taken you know, a couple of them and I'm allergic to them. Uh, a lot of people say they're allergic, but they're not allergic. Uh, they're having side effects, but they get mixed up on a side effect versus allergy. So if somebody says I'm allergic, you can say exactly what happened. Well, it may be really drowsy or I got a lot of diarrhea. No, 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 that, that's a side effect, okay? That's, that's different, different story. The other thing is if someone comes in and says, well, you know, I really can't, I, I took a, one antidepressant once and I got, I got hives and everything. I can't take any, I'm, I'm allergic to antidepressants. That also is not, does, has no real bearing on whether they might be allergic to a different antidepressant. Because sometimes it's not the, the, the compound itself, it may be the dye they put in to give it a pink color you know, that they coat the tablet in or something like that. So we shouldn't tell people, oh, well then we can't go that way. Say, no, 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 we can try other antidepressants and, and you may not be allergic to it. Okay. And toxicity is poisoning. And uh, you take enough of almost anything and it can uh, damage tissue and sometimes can kill people. Uh, the most toxic drug in psychiatry is lithium. You can take a very small uh, overdose and it can kill you. And I said before, it's, it's very protective against suicide. Once a person is stabilized, then it is very protective. But before a person is stabilized, if they're still suicidal and they try to overdose with lithium, it's, it's very, very toxic. <clears throat> Black box warnings. Okay, we're going to take a break here in about 10 minutes. Now, these are found on package inserts and in the physician's desk reference, and they are just that. They are a black box. And the FDA uh, mandates black box warnings when they have discovered that there are a uh, high enough frequency of adverse reactions that are potentially quite dangerous. Okay? Now, this one, it, I'm not trying to pick on Abilify. It's a it's a, it's a good antipsychotic, but it says here uh, increased mortality in elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis. Okay, that's true. There's increased mortality. Okay, it's not huge, but it's enough that it got their attention, and you got to be careful. All right. So we'll be talking about black box warnings uh, a little bit later on when we talk about specific drugs. But it just highlights that hey, really watch out. Okay. Next is, uh, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about placebo, which means I shall please in Latin. Uh, the only thing I learned in Latin class when I was in the ninth grade. Okay, I shall please. Uh, it works because it's a pill. All right, now, has anybody seen the, the fairly recent cover? I think it was Newsweek magazine that said, are antidepressants really, do they really work? Anybody see that? Well, it made the, the front cover. What they did is they talked about a study that actually came out in 1998 that looked at uh, what they call registration trials. And what these are, these are the studies that are used by drug companies. They go to FDA and say, Here, here's a study. Will you license my drug? Will you give me approval? And, and what they did in the study is they, they looked at a, a, a bunch of registration trials going back to like in the mid 80s for antidepressants. And they showed uh, very convincingly that the difference, if you, these, are, these are group studies, okay, the difference between placebo and antidepressant 
was significant but tiny. And, and uh, the, the argument was made that the lion's share then of what might account for antidepressant effects has to do with the placebo effect and a little bit beyond that. Now, that particular study uh, got a lot of attention <clears throat> and, and for some bizarre reason it, it came to the surface again, you know, here in 2010. They were talking about it. Uh, but there were big problems with the study and what they did is more than 50% of the studies they looked at, the, the, the research came from studies that were six to eight weeks in length. And for most people who have major depression, you need longer than that if you're going to reach full remission. Okay, That is the biggest weakness in that study. Uh, secondly is placebo responses are for real. They really occur and it's not just because somebody's suggestible or what have you. Uh, Helen Mayberg's done a lot of brain imaging studies showing that when you give people placebos and they respond, if you look at their metabolic brain activity, now she's looking at people who are treated for depression. The same parts of the brain that show a response to antidepressants also become metabolically changed with placebo. Okay, so it's you know mind over matter kind of thing. I mean, s a significant you know belief in this it, uh, it it does change brain metabolic activity. The downside part of it is that placebo effects oftentimes happen relatively quick and are not very enduring. The third thing is there haven't been at least to my knowledge there haven't been any studies that have used pl tried placebos for the prevention of recurrent episodes. And 80% of depressions, major depressions, will have either recurrent episodes or slip into chronic depression. Now this is not to say that placebos wouldn't work, but the data is not there. The next thing that's wrong with, with the study is that in clinical practice, and I'm sure you all know this, but we're going to get into it in great detail, in clinical practice, uh, a good aggressive treatment with very sick people, you can get about 30% of them well with drugs, but you never stop there. If the first drug doesn't work, then you say, okay, let's try something different. These studies only looked at one drug versus placebo, okay? And we're going to see that if you add drugs or change classes, you can get increasingly large numbers of people better. And the final thing is that if you give animals antidepressants, and they obviously have no, they have no knowledge of being given the antidepressants, uh, they don't get as depressed. And there are these obnoxious uh, animal studies, and you probably heard about these, but where they throw them in a tank of water and they, they, you know, they swim and swim and swim and finally they give up, you know, learn helplessness. And those that have been on antidepressants last a lot longer before they give up. And you know, they have lower cortisol levels and all kinds of stuff like that. So we're gonna, I'm going to come back around here probably later this afternoon and also show you huge limitations uh, you know, with antidepressants because there are lots of problems. They're, they're far from perfect. But that representation of that study that looked at placebo versus a single trial of antidepressant I think was very misleading.